Hello everybody, welcome to module 4 in this course. I hope uh, it was a, 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 a great uh, journey for you. Uh, in module 1 we talked about introduction to API. In module 2 we talked about uh, authentication, uh, attacks and defense. We talked about basic authentication, digest authentication and uh, GWT. Uh, in module 3 we talked about uh, authorizations and uh, OAuth protocol attacks and defense. In this module we will talk about other attacks targeting uh, the API. We will talk about DDoS attacks, brute force attacks, uh, other attacks like SQL injection, cross site scripting, IDOR, and also we will talk about how to uh, targeting uh, target uh, the development and the staging API bypass the protection on uh, the production API. Uh, so let's start with the first video of uh, our first session. Uh, we will talk about aggressive attacks, uh, the DDoS attack. DDoS attack uh, is uh, flooding the server with uh, massive uh, requests uh, and a massive uh, amount of requests uh, in order to get the server offline or uh, make it too busy to respond to other uh, Request from number of users. Uh, the hacker uh, makes the request uh, through uh, botnets of, 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 of uh, PCs or IoT devices that make uh, this massive amount of requests to the server to make it uh, very busy uh, to respond to other requests or take the server offline. There is too many types of uh, DDoS attacks targeting. Uh, uh, layers on uh, OSI uh, model, but uh, the most dangerous one uh, is the layer 7 uh, DOS attack, uh, which uh, which uh, the application layer, because it's uh, very hard to detect this type of attacks uh, and differentiate uh, this uh, request from the normal requests uh, from normal users. Uh, attack uh, attacker uh, target uh, in test case uh, unauthenticated endpoint because it will easy to request uh, uh, from multiple APIs and it will easy to tell uh, its botnet to target this URL without any complication uh, with authentication and without any rep limit can be done uh, in the code. So, uh, in test cases, uh, there is an authenticated endpoint and also uh, this endpoint uh, time or CD consuming process has uh, the process like, uh, for example, uh, uh, input, output, IO, IO writes uh, on the desk like file uploads, for example, or uh, heavy uh, database uh, process like uh, Search uh, like search URL or search API endpoint or to complete API endpoint. This type uh, will will be a time and CPU consuming process. So if uh, if the attacker hit this URL uh, very hard, uh, this more likely to be done successfully. And also, uh, attacker uh, like to uh, target the EP as a IP direct. Uh, and bypass the domain and the caching servers and the loop balancing if any so he can target the IP for the server uh, directly so it can be more likely to success what's the process of the hacker uh, targeting uh, your API or API in the point uh, first uh, recon he uh, tries to get as information as he can from your API as we learned from module 1 he will learn about uh, how your uh, API works what the authentication in your API what URL is the required authentication and what URL is not required authentication uh, what type of web server uh, you are using are you using apache or using nginx or other custom web server are you behind uh, a cloud uh, firewall or not are you using a caching uh, server like vagrant or something else this old information uh, he gathered so he can uh, 
find what uh, URL he can target and what billwood he can use to, to target you. So the second uh, thing in the process is to find the weakest uh, the weakest endpoint, find the weakest uh, URL he can target. Uh, the best case, as we said before, that uh, URL is time consuming, have a, a big CPU processing, and unauthenticated. The URL don't require any authentication, so the best case for him. And the third is prepare the botnet he will use. Um, it's based on the size of the server and size of the, of the website. So uh, it can be uh, a small botnet or maybe a botnet or huge botnet uh, of uh, PCs or IoT devices uh, to participate in this attack. Uh, the second thing to, to do is uh, the next thing to do is prepare the payload itself. Uh, like we said before, if he targeting uh, an uh, API endpoint for search or autocomplete, so uh, the, the, this is the URL he will be used, and uh, the, the URL is requested with the GET request and uh, with the random uh, characters uh, for uh, the query uh, that the API will search for, so he can. Uh, uh, generate as many as he can uh, a random string so it, be, uh, it can be hard to detect this attack and hard to block uh, the request and finally launch the attack against your uh, server uh, uh, we will not uh, have uh, any examples any practical examples for DDoS attack DDoS attack is strictly illegal in across all countries so the purpose the main purpose for the, this uh, video is to learn how it works in general and how to mitigate this attack if you are the target first in mitigation don't make any time c and cb consuming url outside your authentication guide or authentication scope and best practice it make your api all your API behind authentication it make it uh, more control so we can add uh, rate limit policies and spike arrest policies and other uh, mitigation uh, for uh, the API if you are if your uh, URL exposed you can't do this uh, mitigation for rate limit or other things because of uh, uh, attacks done uh, in across a hundred or thousand IDs, so it's very, very, very hard to uh, to block these IDs uh, uh, and apply a rate limit for uh, for the request. So make uh, all URL inside uh, the authentication. Uh, second thing, limit uh, time of requests and number of requests. This is what we talk about rate limit. We must limit the time of of, of requests and the number of requests per second per authenticated uh, user. This uh, will make it uh, very strict uh, and uh, very powerful against the DDoS attacks. Uh, use caching uh, when possible. Uh, it's very powerful also. Uh, load balance uh, every endpoint, every endpoint in the API, uh, make it uh, load balance across uh, servers so it can be flexible and and add or delete server as it needed. And do, uh, finally, don't allow direct ID access, uh, you must use domain name to make it uh, go through the normal. Uh, process you are doing caching or load balancing or other thing don't allow id direct to any of your servers uh, okay this is what we have for ddos attack i hope uh, any one of you uh, be uh, be don't be a victim for this uh, attack uh, and I hope you enjoy it uh, in the next video we'll talk about brute force attack uh, so you next, uh, see you next time thank you